I was interested in art um, as a kid, but it really didn't become real serious for me until junior high. I was not a good student in school, and so um, I really struggled. My mom could see me really struggling. Um, she was always going to the teacher and talking, should we hold her back, should we keep going, what's wrong with her? <laughs> I just, I, I hate to say it, but I was kind of maybe a slow learner when it came early on in, in elementary school. And um, at one point my mom said, she just prayed, oh God, please just give her something she can be proud of. And um, I, I don't know if that had anything to do with it but I, I as I started to get older things started to get a little easier for me and then I got into junior high and I really started drawing I really started um, kind of um, thinking oh maybe this is something I am good at you know pe people will say oh you know I'd, I'd turn my papers over and I'd have a drawing like on the school bus hey that's pretty good and like when I got into college I took a general art courses because even even in art they were like well you have to find a path and you know so they had you take general classes Art, I was an art studio major, and um, I took I took a painting class my freshman year. It didn't really click for me, and then I transferred to another university, and I took a painting class with Professor Crossman, and um, and it was like the light bulb came on for me. He sat down and showed me some things. I was in the painting class, and I saw his paintings, and I thought, oh, I want to paint like that. His stuff's amazing. And, um, and I got hooked. Like it was like a, dr it was a drug for me. Like he would, he would have like a painting was due every two, um, two weeks. I was paintings, painting paintings in between the paintings. Like I just, I just kept going and it was just like, it, it sounds really cheesy and trite, but I felt like I found myself a little bit um, through that painting class. I was like, this, this is it. This is, this is what I'm gonna do. When I paint, like time drops away. Um, I, I, can't, I can't even describe it really. When I sit down and I start mixing color and I get my game plan as far as what I'm gonna paint, if I get inspired and I'm like, that's painting. Like I just know immediately that's a painting. Um, and when I sit down and I start to execute the process and I start getting my paints out and drawing and I just kind of dive into it, literally three hours can go by and I like, I'm like, what happened to that three hours? Like it's, it's crazy. It's therapy, I feel better. When I went through um, five years of miscarriages, honestly, I feel like when I was painting, I feel like I was painting through my pain. Like, I feel like people are like, how did you go through that? How did you endure five of them? I would have quit after two or whatever. And I, I, I think a huge part of it was I had something else to get my mind off of that was positive and that I loved. It was a love for me. I, I love it almost as much as, you know, people. <laughs> Um, and, and it was my way of coping, and it was huge. It was huge. I think, I think that's one of the reasons why I got through those five years, for sure. When people say art is therapy, I think it's therapy for the artist, for sure, when they're creating it, but then I think it can be therapy for the viewer. And that's kind of a neat connection that um, when I'm painting it, I have my, my feelings and my thoughts as I'm creating it, and I'm putting myself into it. And then when they come by, they may look at it and think, oh, suddenly there's a feeling or a thought to them personally. So it's like, it's kind of cool that between the painter, if you can connect from the viewer to the painter, I mean, that's a pretty cool thing. My professor in college, he once told, and I've never forgot this, he said, fall in love with the process, love the process. So there might be times when I'm painting a house portrait or a dog portrait that belongs to someone else. I've never pet, I don't have a connection to it, but I love painting and I love the process. And that mind of gratitude of saying, I get to do this today, I get to paint. I, I don't have to do a job that I don't, that doesn't feel natural to me that I don't love. I get to paint this dog because I can and because it pays the bills and it's because I love the process of painting. Um, so I think that's what keeps me going is I truly love the process. So that's one thing that I couldn't stress enough is draw, practice drawing, um, and also don't give up on opportunities that you think that are not that great. Um, for me personally, I started off by taking any job I possibly could, and some of those I probably had eye rolls, like after I got off the phone, I'm like, oh, I don't wanna do this. But some of those jobs that I did actually led to something better. And I feel like so many times people feel like they have to start at the, the middle or at the top. Sometimes you have to start at the bottom and it stinks, but sometimes you have to start at the bottom and then you have to work your way up. Um, so that's one thing I would say is don't, don't close the door on something that you think, oh, I don't wanna do that. That doesn't pay that much or that. When you're starting out, maybe, maybe give that a try and then build and work and work your way up. And then and don't give up. Don't get so uptight in the ending process of your work now. Your work, if you continue, your work is gonna be better 10 years from now. It just will. Um, but if you just kind of paint when you feel like it and you're not, you have to be all in.
I guess that's one thing I'm trying to say. <laughs> With a million different words, you have to be all in. If you want to make it a career, you have to give it 100% and you have to be all in. And, and you can't let six months lapse and just say, yeah, whenever, I'll get around to it. Um, you you got you to gotta attack it now and, and do it 